Good evening. My name is Christine Nettin, and I am an alcoholic. So you know when you're asked to speak, so many thoughts run through your mind that you don't know where to start. And so many, I can't get them all together, but I just want to say for, from the beginning, I grew up in the Catholic Church, and my mom took every one of us, there was 16 children, and she always made sure that we went to Mass every single Sunday. And I suppose, and she always made sure that at night that we knelt by her and that we said our prayers. And I guess that's probably the first time the Spirit was working on me, was when I was going to, to Mass every single Sunday. I didn't mind going. But I remember my first time going to the Salvation Army. Well, Richard took me to this little church on Duckworth Street. I was going to university. And when we got in and sat down, it was then he said to me, you know, they'll be coming around and they'll be asking you to give your testimony. I didn't even have a clue what testimony was. And when I was sitting there for a short time, lo and behold, this man started with, with the officer's uniform on and a scarred face, Major Darby. He started coming down the aisle. And I looked, oh my God, please. I'm going to come to me, please. But anyway, that was Richard's way of just frightening me to death. <laughs> but I remember people getting up all over the building and giving their testimony. I was amazed. And I know walking home to the university that night, all I could do was cry. I didn't know why. But I believe that was the Holy Spirit that was working on me. And I, I, I never went back to the Salvation Army after that for a long, long time. But in November, now why I started off with, I'm an alcoholic. Well, that was true. But I'm saying it's not true anymore. I am not an alcoholic. They say once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. No, I don't believe it. But back in November of 1991, well, let me go back, let me just say this. Back in 97, I think it was, I went to home camp, and uh, I had to give my testimony there. You've got to be always prepared for that when you're in the Salvation Army. Give your testimony. And anyway, Colonel Barbara Moore was there. And after she heard my testimony, she asked me if I would write it up and send it to her. So I did. And in October of 98, when it was called Catherine back then, my testimony came out in it. And when I heard that Major Day was going to ask us all to give testimonies, I said, oh great, I got one right here. It's written down, and I can just read it. Well. Back in 1991, I had gone to the hospital because I was, had inflammation of the liver and of the pancreas. I was an alcoholic. I drank every day. Why? Why did I let go that far? I don't know. It's something that once it gets a hold of you, it's hard to let go of. Anyway, I was diagnosed as an alcoholic, and, but how did it happen? Well, when I was growing up, when I was a teenager, we used to have a few drinks on the weekends. I remember the first time I did have a few drinks was the night that I was supposed to go to the Bible and meet Richard, because I hadn't met him the weekend before. And one of my friends came in and said, don't go, don't go to Richard tonight because his girlfriend is back. So, she 
she had a flask, so we had a couple of drinks before we went over to the dentist. But anyway, he came to me, <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since. But then, uh, we moved home in 83. And then people were coming to our new house and things like that. And it was a few drinks. And every weekend, it was always a few drinks. But then it got to the point where it took control of my life. I, uh, I drank on special occasions. I, I drank for no reason at all. I used to love the high that it gave me. I used to feel, oh, I was somebody. And I was bold. It gave me a boldness that, because before that I was shy, but whenever I would drink, I was pretty, pretty bold. And I don't need that anymore. I got someone now who makes me bold, bold enough to stand here and to tell you all about it. Well, anyway, I had a, an acquired taste for whiskey. And I would go, get my flask, bring it home. When Richard and the kids left for school, that's when I would start. And when that flask was empty, I schemed to get another one. Richard didn't know where the money was going. And then I kept this up until I got sick. And then I had to go in the hospital. Well, after I came home, I was seeing a counselor, one-on-one. -on -one. And Richard was, he was behind me 100%. He supported me, but he did give me a warning one day. He said, Christine, if it continues, you know you're going to have to leave. Well, anyway, after about, oh, close to a year, seeing the counselor. I was coming home from there one day and I passed the liquor store in Western Bay. And I thought, hey, it was just before Christmas. And I said, oh, Lord, not going to hurt me. I'm okay now. I went in to the liquor store and I bought another glass. <laughs> and all the things started all over again. Then, it was probably March or April or something. Richard found the empty flasks again. And he told me to get on the phone. He went on to school. He said, get on the phone with your counselor. So I called her. And she said, Christine, are you still interested in church? Because we talked about a lot about the Salvation Army. And I said, yes. She said, well, you call your pastor. And you get him to come in. And you ask for his forgiveness. So it was Captain Buck was here at that time. So I called him and I asked him to come in. I was crying, my stomach was in knots. I didn't know how I was going to tell him what I was going to do, but he came in. And I told him what I had been doing. And I said, will you please forgive me? And he said, Christine, it's not me that can I forgive you. He said, I do forgive you. But he said, it's Jesus who has to forgive you. And with that, I can't explain it. But all of a sudden, the knocks went out of my stomach. The tears stopped. I felt such peace. And that's what Jesus did for me. He saved me from the alcohol. I don't know where I would be today if I had continued. I wouldn't be here no alcohol, that's for sure. But I just thank Jesus with all my heart that he took it from me, and I don't, from that day to this, I don't have a longing for it. Okay. I'm around it all, you know, a lot of the times, my family drink, and 
this time is when we go to other places on the weekends, then we're having a drink. But it doesn't bother me. I'd rather have a cup of tea now. And I just want to give God all the praise and all the glory and all the honor because he healed me. And he can heal you too. All you have to do is just say, Jesus, please help me. Come into my heart. Make me a better person. Teach me what I ought to be and what I ought to do. And that's what I did. And the name of the article at that time was called Delivered. And I am delivered. And I've got to say, Major Dave couldn't have picked a better song for me to leave tonight because it really applies to me. It's song number 907. <coughs> 